Let's talk about the controversy that is the Eagles quarterback sneak. I can't take no loss. Huh? I don't even know what it costs. Huh? I hit the ground and it go off. Yeah, hit the ground and it go off. Yeah, I can't take no loss. What's going no on, loss. folks? This is Coach Mark from Pro Fan Talk. Yeah, and and you've been hearing about it. It's been in the news lately. Everybody's all pissed off about the Eagles QB sneak. Most of everybody outside of Philadelphia wants to call it the tush push. But we affectionately call it the brotherly shove for obvious reasons. Now, the funny thing is the Eagles have been doing this for two years. Wasn't such a big deal in 21. Wasn't such a big deal in 22. Although in 22, it did pick up a little bit of momentum because the Eagles were so good at executing this play. Now, back in 21... When Jalen Hurts hadn't quite progressed into the quarterback that he is, nobody cared. And that's interesting because it's only come about because he's gotten so much better, because the Eagles were so much better, and because we're running a play that nobody can stop. Every other team has an opportunity to run this play. We are the only team who can run this effectively almost every time, or at least 93% of the time. There's been a few cases where it didn't convert. Most recently, if you watch the game where we played Tampa Bay, we had two opportunities like on the one yard line. The first time we ran it, Tampa Bay stopped us. Go back, watch the play, we ran it twice down on the end zone. Tampa Bay stopped us the first time. The second time, Jalen Hurts got in. So the play can be stopped. The problem is nobody can figure out how to stop it. So I guess you need to go back and watch that one particular play that Tampa Bay's defense did a good enough job. And I can tell you what they did because I watched it. You got to match the depth or getting as low as Guard, center, guard. Kelsey, Jurgens, Landon Dickerson. They get super low, almost helmets to the ground low because they're going to cut the front people's, whoever's in that D-tackle, nose guard spot, spot they're going to cut their legs, right? Then you got people coming over the top and then you got two people pushing Jalen from behind. Now what Tampa Bay did, they matched the, you know, match the depth at the point of attack. Then I saw something very interesting. I saw two guys pushing Jalen Hurts back, but they were pushing his shoulder pads and pushing his helmet. Logic being where the head goes, the body will follow. And if you go back to last year, Go back to last year when the Eagles played at Dallas and Gardner Minshew had to run the QB sneak. Lined it up the same way Gardner Minshew made the mistake is he doesn't have the leg power that Jalen Hurts has. He can't squat 600 pounds. So what did he do? He tried to go over the top and apparently he ain't got no hops either. So he went over the top, didn't make it, didn't convert. So it is only... Because it is Jalen Hurts, we've got a quarterback that can squat 600 pounds and he is very, very difficult to stop. On top of, you got two guys behind them, usually it's A.J. Brown and Devontae Smith or another running back, giving that extra push. Dallas Goddard is on his left and it's usually Stoll or Calcaterra on the right, but you got a stacked lineup and it's hard to stop, but it can be stopped. My problem is everybody's bitch moaning and complaining because their team, their team can't stop it. Sean Payton tried to raise all that hell last year talking about my team is going to use this rugby scrum every chance we get until the NFL bans it. How's that working out for you, Sean? Did you use it when you got 70 put on you by the, by the Dolphins? I didn't think so. Like, stop playing. What it, what it comes down to is you don't have a quarterback that can run it right. And clearly, you don't know how to run it right. Well, hell, you got Taysom Hill. Let him run it. 
So everybody's talking smack and it's built up such momentum that most likely, and I would be surprised if this didn't happen, most likely next year they're going to try to ban it. They're going to try to ban this play because now it's so rugby. It's a scrum. It's not part of football. It lacks the finesse of football. And I was like, you got to be kidding me. Out of all of the, the physical play and the physicality that they're trying to take out of the game, they're not trying. They've taken out of the game. This is the one play y'all want to gripe about is the QB sneak because nobody else can run it but the Eagles. To me, that sounds biased. That's where that Philly bias comes in. And everybody, you know, people outside of Philadelphia will swear it doesn't exist, but it exists. You see it when we run our plays. You see it with the disrespect with our players, including Jalen Hurts. Obviously, the plays that we run, they got a problem with it. The fans, they got a problem with it. Every time it's Philadelphia that does something, somebody's going to have a problem with it. I guarantee you, if we would have had a situation like the Patriots had, where the guy lost his life in the stand, that would have been front page news if it would have happened in Philadelphia. That Philly bias is real. And this is just another, I don't know, opportunity for people to just complain about something that Philly's doing. They hated that we win in. So this is where y'all gonna go. We gotta get, because nobody can stop the play, we gotta get it banned. Because Philadelphia and Jalen Hurts are the only people in the world that can run this successfully. Now the NFL has to ban it. That sounds suspect if you ask me. Line, line up and stop it. I like what Ocho Cinco says. Don't let him get in third and short because that's some nonsense. But then you get, now the media's getting involved. And now you got people picking sides. Peter King, Mike Florio, Chris Sims said what he said. Go crazy, try to kill the quarterback. Like he went way too far with it. And I know he tried to walk it back. Like I didn't, I didn't mean it, but what, dude, once you put it out in the ethos and it rolls in social media and stuff like that, I know exactly what you were saying. You should have said it in the first place. What you said was, you know, go ahead hunting and try to kill the quarterback. I know what you meant was, if he's going to do that, make him pay for it. Well, how are you going to make him pay for it? Because the only way you can do that is if somebody is launching and taking headshots at the quarterback. So any way you slice that comment, it ends up bad for business and bad for business for Jalen Hurts. So you shouldn't have said it. You being a quarterback, that Philly bias right off the bat. You wouldn't have said that when it was Tom Brady. Jalen Hurts is not the only quarterback that's benefited from this. We're just a team that's figured out how to do it in a way that it's hard to stop. On top of, again, we got a quarterback that can squat 600 pounds. It's some NFL linemen that don't squat that much. And we got a quarterback that can do it. So that's a big help. Chris Sims said what he said. Rich Eisen has jumped on board. He wants to get rid of it because he doesn't like it. It's so funny how all these people that don't play football, they are the ones that want to get rid of it. Jack Del Rio had his, at least Jack Del Rio is a coach. I mean, at the end of the day, it just sounds like sour grapes because they can't do it. So that's the way you get, that's the way you stop somebody. You got to change the rule. So it sounds like a lot of BS, but it it seems to me that next year they're going to find a way to get it banned. I would be surprised if they don't. I hope they don't. I hope we keep doing it. If you want to do anything, just say you can't push the quarterback. I heard somebody say this rule. I think it may have been on the Rich Eyes and so where they just said, in that box on the goal line, or if you were in short yardage, you got a you got a two by ten box, tackle to tackle, two yards either way. If you're in that box, you can't push anybody. Okay, so what happens like if you just run a I, let's say it's not quarterback sneak? What happens when you're in I formation and you got short yardage and you slam it up in there and you get met at the line of scrimmage by the defensive tackle, but your tailback? or your offensive tackle loops back around and tries to push you to get the first down. Is that illegal too? That's the problem. And that's the thing that people aren't thinking about because once you set that parameter, how far are they going to push that boundary? How many times have you seen a running back get two or three yards? He gets stalemated by a defensive back or a linebacker. Then the offensive tackle or the offensive guard or the center comes up and they push the pile and move it forward to get the first down or something like that because the play's not dead. So now, are they going to start blowing the whistle sooner? Or all of this stuff comes into play. It's like you're trying to open up Pandera's box and you don't need to. You don't need to. So everybody's just complaining about it because their team can't stop it. Because I guarantee you, if the Cowboys were doing it, you wouldn't want to stop it. If Tom Brady was playing and he was doing it, you wouldn't want to stop it. If Patrick Mahomes was doing it, you wouldn't want to stop it. 
But for some reason, because Philly's got adept at it, and we got that quarterback, we got to change the rules. It's past stopping it. Nobody can stop it. So you got to change the rules. We'll see what they're going to do. They're going to keep it for the remainder of the year. And then, you know, it'll probably come into question again next year. Because I remember all of the hoopla that came up when somebody tried to point out that they were changing the rule about the RPO and you couldn't hand off the ball going forward with somebody in front of the quarterback. And it all is, it caused all this confusion because the narrative seemed like that they were trying to stop the RPO. Once again, everybody's looking at Jalen Hurts. And it turned out to be false. Whoever put this out there didn't read the rules. At the end of the day, can they stop Jalen Hurts? No. And if DeAndre Swift keeps running the way he's running, it ain't gonna matter anyway. It shouldn't be too many third shorts. But that's why you play the game. If you like my content, please hit that subscribe button. Click that notification bell so you don't miss a thing. If you don't mind, mosey on to my channel. Click that top 10 playlist and just let it roll so we can get them watch hours up. But as usual, I will see you guys in the next play. Peace.